Hi, welcome to Flight Test, I'm Josh, and today we're going to be showing you how to take your FT Versal Wing and convert it from a swappable tractor style power pod into a clean flying machine that's a pusher. Before we get started, you will need your FT Elements simple motor mount uh, available at the store. Also, the first 250 have these included in the kit. Uh, we're going to be building up more and more simple elements that are crucial for people that they may not want to build. Uh, themselves, but they can easily get mad under their future products. But if you haven't got this already, go ahead and get it. There's also plans for this and a pattern for this on the plans itself, so you can always cut it out with the jigsaw yourself if you want. Get your parts in order and we'll get started. Now for this project, I started with a whole brand new wing. Reason being is I want to go straight to the pusher style and also add some FPV gear in the near future. If you are going to convert a tractor to a pusher style, simply start by removing the two front dowels. You can pull them out or you can snip them off and also the rear popsicle stick and the zip tie. You won't need those anymore for this because the whole bottom is going to be clean. And once again, you can mount the servos on both the top or the bottom depending on what you choose. But I went ahead and opted because this is going to be FPV and I want the bottom of the wing to be as clean as possible to go ahead and install the servos on the very top. The only thing you lose here is that beautiful top edge that you can't decorate as easy, but you do have a lot more durability. Our next step will be to simply pop out the motor mount. Now you can put this together with hot glue, but I'd strongly recommend some CA and you have a nice tight fit with this, so you shouldn't have any issues with uh, putting it together. Everything just tabs into place. You really can't get it wrong. I like to actually put the glue down in the recess, push the piece on top of it, and then follow it up with a thin bead of glue around all the seams. We made the tolerance as tight as possible so everything has a nice strong fit. Alright, doesn't hurt to just push down on all the edges, make sure everything's nice and flush. And then follow up with the bead of glue on the inside. This process I'm using medium CA, just simple CA we got at the local hobby store. Aerotech always keeps us well supplied with that. And I'm also going to follow up with a little spritz of kicker just to go ahead and help the drying process be a little bit faster. Our next step is to install the motor mount uh, and our engine together here. Now, because of where this motor lies, I wanted to be able to pass this through the side, so I put these holes here, but in some applications, you may want to have the shaft of this motor go through, so this motor can also be mounted the other way around. It all depends on what kind of motor you have and what application you need. But I'm going to go ahead and pass these through just like that. Now for tractor conversion, we can go any size prop we really want in the front. Uh, optimally, we use 9-inch props in the front um, or a bitey 8-inch prop. But on the back here, this is currently spaced for an 8-inch prop. But what I did do is I did move the control horns out a little bit, so you can trim this away and get a 9-inch in there. Uh, say you're running a Blue Wonder. My kids love flying this in the purser conversion version with a Blue Wonder, but they're running a 947. It powers it beautifully and flies beautifully. But for most people that want to go to a speed or an FPV conversion, an 8.6, an 8.4, maybe an 8.8 would be good for the back there. So you can always go bigger, but you can't go smaller. So long story short, if you're going to run a 9-inch prop, you do want to trim this out just a little bit more. Now, when you're placing your motor mount, go ahead and center up your motor mount here. And the reason it's so important to have your prop and everything on here is you don't want this to be right up here against the trailing edge of your wing. If you do that, there's going to be an air pocket, and every time this prop comes around, you're going to get a clap. As Dave says, clapping is wasted energy. Anytime you hear noise, that's energy going out the door. You don't want that. So you do want roughly about a half of an inch space um, to go back there. Now, the only downside is the more you move your motor back, Unfortunately, the more nose weight you have to put in here, and you do need a lot more nose weight to balance this out when you are running a pressure conversion, which makes it perfect for applications like FPV uh, and adding GoPros. So I'm going to go ahead and center this up. You don't need to get too crazy about it. Just get as close as possible and as perpendicular as possible. And I'm going to go ahead and take a pen and trace this out. Now we can just follow up and not only go through the very top layer of foam, not the bottom layer. The bottom layer is what we're going to be gluing into. Now the better off you can make this in tighter fit, you can actually go back with a bead of glue afterwards and refasten down the very top, which is very nice. It gets a lot of strength then. Now this should nestle down in nice and neat, just like that. Now that's it on the very bottom of the plate, we don't have any incidence angles. If you went ahead and just glued it on the very top, you'd be getting a tremendous amount of down thrust, and we certainly don't want that. You're going to want to actually have this on the very top of the bottom plate of the wing. As you can see, this is perfect. This would be a good time if you're not happy with anything, you can make a little bit of adjustments to get everything just perfect. But before we glue this in, I strongly recommend just taking your knife and lightly scoring and removing this bottom layer of paper. Reason being is if you glue this to the bottom layer of paper, your bond of your motor is only as good as the bond of the paper sticking to the foam, which frankly, I would not trust at all. So go ahead and just pull that up, peel that paper off, 
and get rid of it. Now that we're happy with the fit, I'm going to put a healthy amount of glue on the bottom of the motor mount here. And slide it on in. Nice firm push down. And this is another advantage of having the servos on the top. You can really push this flat against a work table. Now, if this doesn't work out, you can simply take like a 2x6 or something like a, a book and physically raise this up so your servos aren't touching the ground and you can still do the exact same thing. But put as much down pressure as possible to get as good of a, a spread on the glue and as much friction against both surfaces to get the best glue joint. Make it really strong. Now we can follow up with a bead of glue around the rest of the motor mount. Now I know I'm putting glue between wood and tape, but it's better than no glue at all. Alright, next step is we're going to simply go ahead and connect our ESC. Now if your motor runs backwards, and backwards being the opposite of tractor style, um, just simply connect, change any one of these two connectors to make the motor spin the other way. And also when you install your prop, make sure the numbers always point towards the nose. The numbers always need to go in the direction the plane flies. If you have the motor back, running backwards and the prop's still backwards, you're not going to get the performance you need. Now that we have this the way we like it, I'm going to go ahead and since we need a lot of nose wind, I'm going to try to push as much of the electronics up as forward as possible. And I also want the ESC to get plenty of air. So I'm going to go ahead and go and fasten that down now. Now if your ESC gets hot, your glue will melt and this will fall off. But this doesn't even get warm, so I'm just going to put it down just like that. We can now route our ESC wire down. I'll just simply put a little tiny slot next to this and push it on through. Now one of the great benefits about flying wings and uh, pusher conversion is if, God forbid, you do crash and you are just learning, you can easily protect all of your electronics, which are by far the most expensive part of this whole build. This plane wing, wing is virtually three sheets of foam board and you're ready to go. So I strongly recommend if you can make it pusher, make it a pusher. The only downside is you can't launch it nearly as easy either. So uh, that is a downside to it. But the sleekness, the way it looks, the way it sounds, the way it flies is just exceptional. Now, I'm not going to hook up the electronics until after we get everything, so I'm just going to tuck these back in here and they'll stay put nice and neat. Well, this is virtually ready to go. Now, we're going to go ahead and put a GoPro in the front of here because I do want this to be an FPV ship. Uh, and to do that, we're going to bring David in. Hello. Hello. So we're going to install the GoPro first, right? Yep. Because that's the one thing that can't change. We want to make sure we have an unobstructed view. And the nice thing is this little nose is going to kind of protect it a little bit, huh? Yeah, it does. So, yeah, just put it all the way up front in the nose as far, as far forward, forward as, you, as you, yeah, as you, there. <laughs> so, if you don't like your GoPro or you're using someone else's GoPro, you put can it all the way in front. All the way up in the front. It's probably better to start with a smaller hole than you need and kind of whittle it bigger, right? Yeah. I just, yeah, I eyeballed mine, just stabbed the foam and then made a hole bigger after. You're very violent. That's how we roll. <laughs> now, if you're just going straight to a non-FPV system, then basically you can watch this, but really the battery placement is going to be the next most important thing. And to be truthful, you're going to need to put some nose weight in there or battery up. Just put you know a couple bigger batteries up closer to the nose. Yeah, otherwise it won't balance yeah. out because the motor is so heavy yeah. on the back. It's and, far, far back. And ironically, as we said in the earlier build video, this, this wing can really... You don't have to be really concerned with the exact airfoil. Like yeah. if, if the airfoil is a little bit off, you, you're not going to really lose any performance. You may lose speed, uh, as we found out. But, um, you know, ultimately it's going to be fine. But in some applications, you're going to be able to shove your whole entire battery up. If the wing's built a little bit fatter up here, you'll be able to get a whole 2200 up there and close it. Yeah. Where if you build it real sleek on the top, it's not going to really fit. It's going to protrude down a little bit. Yeah, a little bit. So well, it doesn't really matter, though. No, it works out really good. Now, it's a really good idea to secure your GoPro as well. Really, so, really good, like a, yeah. A uh, vel piece of Velcro strap or something. Just punch a hole. I'm gonna and, do that right now. Yeah, and feed it through. Just as a backup because uh, it tends to fling it out otherwise. Yeah. You don't want that. And, and high G's, it's amazing how high G maneuvers really have a lot of effect it does. on components. We've lost a lot of parts in Chad's backyard. Mostly batteries. Mostly batteries. And these wings, you can really turn them on a dime and put some really hardcore throw into it. Let's go ahead and punch this one in the back here first. So yeah, you just feed it through and that's it really. It's pretty straightforward. Everything about this plane is pretty simple and pretty open to whatever you want to do with it. You don't have to uh, really obsess about the geometry. Just make it be what you want it to be. Yeah. 
yeah, that's not gonna go fall out. No. So, to install, when installing the uh, uh, the FPV gear, what I would recommend if you want a super nice clean setup is if you know you're gonna fly at FPV from the start, just lay it out before you glue the internally. wing. Internally. Yeah. So lay it out internally before you glue the wings together. Yeah. And that way you don't have any holes or anything. You just have a couple little wires, but make sure you check your system before you do it. Make sure you have a video before you just take it for granted. All, all the connectors are right because yeah. you may put your goggles on and find out that's a nice clean setup has to be cut into. Yeah. So. But other, otherwise, what you can do is just cut little windows. Yes. And there's a spar in the wing. So what you want to do is either cut in front of that or behind that. You don't want to cut into that. No, that'd be awkward. Yes. Spar really doesn't do much other than give it form, but you don't want to be cutting out. Any yeah, spar it's, you can help it. it's unnecessary. And truthfully, you want to keep everything as far forward as possible because the pusher style doesn't even nose weight. Yes. So what's the what's the rule? Your transmitter and your receiver as far apart as yes. possible, right? So I can actually show this yeah. very visually. So take the receiver and put it all the way into the wing tip on one side and your video transmitter all the way on the other side. That's how I have mine set up, the one we used in the episode. And it flew quite well. It does, it flies really well. So I have the yep. FPV transmitter all the way over here and the, uh, and the receiver, the RC receiver all the way over here. There's no interference in between there. And the nice thing is you have very little drag. The 5.8 has a very small antenna. Yeah, you do. But very, very little drag too. So nice clean setup. Now what about airflow? If you had to put airflow over a transmitter, would you recommend just putting a little NACA duck? Uh, yeah, a NACA duck would work. Okay. This doesn't get very hot. Yes. Um, it's pretty efficient. But yes, a NACA duct or uh, the, uh, a plastic spoon. Okay, like one of those. nice. Uh, if you take one of those and then cut it in half and then glue it on the top and make a little hole, it scoops it in. Beautiful, beautiful. And anytime you put air into something, you need to have an exhaust. Yes. So make sure you put a little hole behind it and that'll get a beautiful amount of airflow. Chris Click did that with his super fast, uh, remember Seth? Yeah. The super fast one, he had just a little tiny hole here and a little tiny hole there. So the air had to go down across his ESC and then out nice. and it worked wonderfully. Um, yeah, I made a little, little, I don't know if you can see that, I taped over it, but that's just a little, a little flap. Little flap, little door. Basically trace your transmitter, cut three sides of it, open it up like a door, put yeah. your transmitter in. Put the door facing backwards <laughs> so it doesn't catch the air. Just, I've seen people do that, it's not, it doesn't. They wonder why their plane's always yelling to the right or left, huh? Yeah. Very cool. So if you're gonna place it out, just get your system placed. Obviously, uh, extensions, servo extensions, are gonna all play a limit. You wanna make sure you can get your electronics to everywhere. So uh, just make sure you put a little time into plan this out, lay it out. And also, it doesn't hurt to just put a little piece of tape and tape this up and establish your CG. One thing, no matter whether it's a tractor or a pusher, your CG doesn't change. Well, we got this roughly where we want to. Why don't we go right to where we're going to do with the battery? Sure. And show them a couple different techniques with the battery. Now, your FPV setup balances out perfectly, even though you have all your electronics fairly aft. Yeah. With a GoPro and a 2200. Yes, it does. I just shove it all the way uh, up towards the GoPro uh, internally. So and that's it. It's basically just behind it. And this is where we go back to however you build the wing, whether the wing's a little bit fatter in cord or a little bit narrower. Yeah. Your battery could be completely concealed or it may stick out about a quarter of an inch. Or if your batteries are like my batteries, where they start off like this and they look like this. Um, look, at, look at that difference. Can you see that difference? That is the same battery. It's the same C rating and everything. I would, yeah. I would throw that one away. Actually, I was just gonna pop a little hole in no, there. No, no, no. And we can um, drain no. the air out. <laughs> It'll last some electrons out too, but you know. Um, but anyway, going back to what we're talking about, um, it all depends on your application. In this application, I want to go crazy. Go 3,000. Go 3,000. Well, look how thin it is. Yeah, it is very thin. Crazy and that's thin. really nice on the wing. And this wing can really handle the weight. And it seems like the heavier they are, when we were flying the speed wing. Yeah, it just penetrates. It, does, it penetrates. It does not come down. And it's fast. It's smooth. So it's nice. ultimately, you can always go smaller. But I'm going to go ahead and trace this out for right here. Sure. Now what we want to do is, uh, where's some, do you have some tape over there? We're just going to tape this guy on here. Let's see where we land. That's pretty nose heavy. There's you have the old heavy GoPro as well. Oh yeah, the that's newer right. one is much lighter. Well, that's getting better. Now, one thing we gotta take into account for: grab me those uh, the receiver. About here and here. Yeah. Now, when we take another look at that, you can see it's a lot more tolerant. Yeah. That's good. So that'll work. Yep. Yeah. All right. Now that we're happy with this, 
before we untape it, let's go ahead and just trace it out. 2200s, I think all of our airplanes are always going to be based around a 2200, um, at least the ones that take the beef. You should be able to put a 2200 and fly it with no problems. But it's kind of cool, you can go a little bit smaller like on the FT3D and get amazing yeah. performance. Or on this, go a little bit bigger. Now another trick you had, David, is we can actually cut this and make it a door, can't we? Yeah. So I made it, yeah, uh, barn door, so it splits in the middle. And with this tape being on the center, you can just simply put some tape here and then it'll stick there and it won't pull up your paper. Yep, that's how I do it. There we go. Now these lines here and here, we're not touching them. Nope. Careful if you have any electronics that you don't cut through it. Because that would just be awkward. That would be something I would do. Once again, the spar is only just for form, so I guess we could take some out of it, right? You're the boss, Mr. Bixler. <laughs> I'm scared of a whole bunch of people right now. Yeah. Well, look at this. The Swift signal, they don't even have spars. Actually, to tell you the truth, all the strength comes from these surface and the top surface and bottom surface being united. Yeah. Um, so don't worry about that if you do have to move a little bit. I'm really hung up on putting the biggest battery I possibly can in this thing. Everything is a trade-off. Yeah. But yeah, I think you can shove that can straight you? in. Yeah. Can you? If you just go like that. Usually I plug mine in. I have my cable coming on the on the back side, and then I just shove mine. Oh, look at that straight in and then I close the door and I just take that nice that'll work there you have it a battery door we're gonna go ahead and remove this battery let's go ahead and do the same thing we did with the GoPro but we'll go ahead and cut two slits here batteries are the heaviest thing on the plane they like to go flying when you pull up real sharp yeah they do and people like to laugh at you when that happens <laughs> we have a horse pasture out at my family's farm yeah. And we lost a battery one day and we went out looking for it and we found a battery that we lost three days earlier. <laughs> so I was really Yeah, happy. from a Bixler. Yeah. <laughs> it, was, it was pretty bad. Yeah, that's right. You were there with the Bixler yeah. one got ejected. That was a Gen Zace battery. Yeah. I, was, I was really sad because it was for the tricopters. <laughs> he came out, it, it was a turn G battery, the other one, a blue battery that flew out. And he comes in and has a Gen Ace battery. I'm like, that's not the same battery. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, I didn't find the other one. I found one, so it doesn't matter. We're good. We stopped it. I think eventually we'll look for it. Um, same thing with the Bixler canopy. We lost, you know, when the batteries go out of Bixlers, the canopies go with them. Yeah. And we found the Bixler canopy when we were looking <laughs> for a canopy, too. So, uh, nice. see, they always come around. That's always a benefit of flying lots of it. Lots of similar airplanes out in the fields. So now we can actually put the battery in here. And it's going to hold it. And it's going to hold it down beautifully. That's cool. Our next step will be to uh, to route our wires, and since we now have our nice spar missing, we can actually do that pretty easy now. <laughs> yeah. We? Let's go ahead and pop that through, and I think we're officially done. We also did one crucial thing, too. We left off the wing planes for the time being. Yeah, it was just easier to work yeah, with. it's easier on a flat surface, but also, these things make great night flyers. Yes, because you can route LEDs through here. So another thing is if you want to push LEDs through here, now with, with all the electronics going in here, it'd be a little difficult. You can snake a thin, flexible piece of music wire in there, yeah. pull your LED on through, two dabs of glue, it, it glows does. like a lantern. It's awesome. So if you're going to put any LEDs in there, it's a good idea to do this now before you put your wing plates on and you'll be good to go. Just always make sure it balances out. Thanks for watching. Uh, post your belts of your yes. wings and post them on our site so we can see what yeah. your ideas and your solutions. Yes. We're hopefully you want to give you a platform that you can go crazy modifying and there's I'm sure a lot of things we haven't even thought of. Uh, for example, I want to see a uh, push puller. Do that. I want to see that now.